In general relativity, the Rayshadri equation, or Landau Rayshadri equation, is a fundamental result describing the motion of nearby bits of matter. The equation is important as a fundamental lemma for the Penrose Hawking singularity theorems and for the study of exact solutions in general relativity, but has independent interest, since it offers a simple and general validation of our intuitive expectation that gravitation should be a universal attractive force between any two bits of mass energy in general relativity, as it is in Newton's theory of gravitation. The equation was discovered independently by the Indian physicist Amal Kumar Raychaudhuri and the Soviet physicist Lev Landau. Mathematical <laughs> <laughs> statement <laughs> 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 Given a time-like unit vector field x vec x which can be interpreted as a family or congruence of non-intersecting world lines via the integral curve, not necessarily geodesics. Raychaudhuri's equation can be written: theta equals minus theta two three minus two sigma two plus two omega two minus E x a a plus x a a display style dot theta equals frac theta caret two three minus two sig ma caret two plus two omega caret two e vec x caret o underscore a plus dot x caret o underscore a where sigma two equals 1 2 sigma m n sigma m n omega 2 equals 1 2 omega m n omega m n Display style sigma carrot two equals frac one two sigma underscore Minnesota sigma carrot Minnesota omega carrot two equals frac one two omega underscore Minnesota omega carrot Minnesota r non-negative quadratic invariance of the shear tensor sigma a b equals theta a b minus one three theta H A B Display style sigma underscore ab equals theta underscore ab FRAC one three theta H underscore ab and the vorticity tensor Omega A B equals H M A H N B X M N display style omega underscore ab equals h caret m underscore a h caret n underscore b x underscore m n respectively. Here theta a b equals h m a h n b X M N display style theta underscore ab equals h caret m underscore a h caret n underscore b x underscore m n is the expansion tensor theta display style theta is its trace called the expansion scalar and h a b equals g a B plus X A X B display style H underscore ab equals G underscore ab plus X underscore A X underscore B is the projection tensor onto the hyperplanes orthogonal to X display style VEC X also dot denotes differentiation with respect to proper time counted along the world lines in the congruence. Finally, the trace of the tidal tensor 
e x a b display style e vec x underscore ab can also be written e x a a equals r m n x m x n display style e vec x caret o underscore o equals r underscore minnesota x caret m x caret n plus 1 this quantity is sometimes called the Rayshadari scalar. Intuitive significance The expansion scalar measures the fractional rate at which the volume of a small ball of matter changes with respect to time as measured by a central comoving observer and so it may take negative values. In other words, the above equation gives us the evolution equation for the expansion of the timelike congruence. If the derivative with respect to proper time of this quantity turns out to be negative along some world line after a certain event, then any expansion of a small ball of matter whose center of mass follows the world line in question must be followed by recollapse. If not, continued expansion is possible. The shear tensor measures any tendency of an initially spherical ball of matter to become distorted into an ellipsoidal shape. The vorticity tensor measures any tendency of nearby world lines to twist about one another if this happens, our small blob of matter is rotating, as happens to fluid elements in an ordinary fluid flow which exhibits non-zero vorticity. The right-hand side of Rayshadari's equation consists of two types of terms. Terms which promote re collapse initially non-zero expansion scalar non-zero shearing positive trace of the tidal tensor this is precisely the condition guaranteed by assuming the strong energy condition which holds for the most important types of solutions such as physically reasonable fluid solutions terms which oppose re collapse non-zero vorticity corresponding to newtonian centrifugal forces Positive divergence of the acceleration vector e.g., outward-pointing acceleration due to a spherically symmetric explosion, or more prosaically, due to body forces on fluid elements in a ball of fluid held together by its own self-gravitation, usually one term will win out. However, there are situations in which a balance can be achieved. This balance may be Stable, in the case of hydrostatic equilibrium of a ball of perfect fluid e.g. in a model of a stellar interior, the expansion, shear, and vorticity all vanish, and a radial divergence in the acceleration vector the necessary body force on each blob of fluid being provided by the pressure of surrounding fluid counteracts the Rayshadari scalar, which for a perfect fluid is E x a b equals 4 Pi mu plus three p display style e vec x underscore ab equals four pi mu plus three p. In Newtonian gravitation, the trace of the tidal tensor is four pi mu display style four pi mu. In general relativity, the tendency of pressure to oppose gravity is partially offset by this term, which under certain circumstances can become important. Unstable, for example, the world lines of the dust particles in the Gödel solution have vanishing shear, expansion, and acceleration, but constant vorticity just balancing a constant Rayshadari scalar due to non-zero vacuum energy. Cosmological constant. Topic. Focusing theorem Suppose the strong energy condition holds in some region of our spacetime, and let x be a timelike geodesic unit vector field with vanishing vorticity, or equivalently, which is hypersurface orthogonal. For example, this situation can arise in studying the world lines of the dust particles in cosmological models which are exact dust solutions of the Einstein field equation provided that these world lines are not twisting about one another, in which case the congruence would have non-zero vorticity. Then Rayshadari's equation becomes theta equals minus theta 2 3 minus 2 Sigma 
2 minus e x a a display style dot theta equals frac theta caret 2 3 minus 2 sigma caret 2 e vec x caret a underscore a now the right hand side is always negative so even if the expansion scalar is initially positive if our small ball of dust is initially increasing in volume eventually it must become negative our ball of dust must recollapse indeed in this situation we have theta minus theta 2 3 display style dot theta leq frac theta caret 2 3 Integrating this inequality with respect to proper time, tau display style tau gives one theta one theta zero plus tau three display style frac one theta geq frac one theta underscore zero plus frac tau three. If the initial value Theta zero display style theta underscore zero of the expansion scalar is negative. This means that our geodesics must converge in a caustic theta display style theta goes to minus infinity within a proper time of at most minus three theta zero display style minus three theta underscore zero after the measurement of the initial value theta 0 display style theta underscore 0 of the expansion scalar this need not signal an encounter with a curvature singularity but it does signal a breakdown in our mathematical description of the motion of the dust topic <laughs> optical equations There is also an optical or null version of Raychaudhuri's equation for null geodesic congruences. Theta caret equals minus one two theta caret two minus two sigma caret two plus two omega caret 2 minus t mu nu u mu u nu Display style dot wide hat theta equals frac one two wide hat theta carrot two minus two wide hat sigma carrot two plus two wide hat omega carrot two t underscore mu nu u carrot mu u carrot nu here, the hats indicate that the expansion, shear and vorticity are only with respect to the transverse directions. When the vorticity is zero, then assuming the null energy condition, caustics will form before the affine parameter reaches 2 theta caret 0 display style 2 wide hat theta underscore 0 topic applications The event horizon is defined as the boundary of the causal past of null infinity. Such boundaries are generated by null geodesics. The affine parameter goes to infinity as we approach null infinity, and no caustics form until then. So, the expansion of the event horizon has to be non-negative. As the expansion gives the rate of change of the logarithm of the area density, this means the event horizon area can never go down, at least classically, assuming the null energy condition. See also Congruence general relativity, for a derivation of the kinematical decomposition and of Raychaudhuri's equation. Gravitational singularity Penrose-Hawking singularity theorems for an application of the focusing theorem. <laughs> Notes <laughs>